post lunch session very difficult one i can i can just moderate the panel but not your sleep <laughs> but i i believe there's a digital experience on moderating the sleep this time so you, how many of you have downloaded the tech hr app so if you yawn there'll be one beep if you sleep there'll be three beeps okay so be ready for that okay so before i start asking the panel uh, it's a it's a very uh, you know dear topic to all of us especially the hr professionals as to what is changing in the space of performance management and uh, we we were just discussing few things before we came here and said okay let's not probably repeat the usual stuff and try and share some examples uh, that that is that maybe there will be there may be some takeaways for all of you so i'll just cover some usual stuff which has already been spoken in probably other forums and earlier forums also so yes definitely uh, uh, there is a focus on employee experiences as compared to employee, employee engagement nowadays and uh, the employee experiences are, is also changing the landscape for performance management uh so what is changing in the in the experiences that we are trying to create for performance management one uh the annual process which is uh, long dreaded by employees and managers is definitely getting replaced by uh, so called continuous performance management uh with regular bite sized conversations and uh, definitely there is a ask by the younger population for more and more conversations like this i just want to share some data with you here according to recent gallup study only 19% millennials say they receive routine feedback from managers and only 17% say that feedback is meaningful so definitely there's an ask for uh, more uh, conversations around performance and regular con conversations around that secondly i think is less about past behavior and more on coaching for the future third uh, i think many of you have tried and some are in the trial process that bell curve so called stack and rank system is being phased out by several companies and in favor of uh, so called calibration peer reviews discussions around talent and management by objectives etc so i think definitely there's a there's a uh, trial going on in some companies and some companies have decided to move away with bell curve etc lastly i think it's about customization of performance management to industry to organize uh, to organization to workforce within the company different workforces is not just one kind of performance management is different kind of performance management that uh, tools that are there in the in within the same organization also so the future uh, is more towards you know greater trust trust and uh, creating trust and involvement of employees as compared to just talking about what has happened in the past uh if we talk about the tech space in performance um, uh, systems we uh, definitely have a lot of organizations tried mobile technology and mobile technology for regular feedback uh, feedback on the go uh, real time so definitely the technology uh, takes an important role here there are different apps uh, that companies are trying globally also one is 15.5 i've heard trackstar review snap and there is uh, one of my panelists here is from zoho so there's a nine box model etc that you know uh, they have they have rolled out for various companies uh, people analytics and big data definitely is playing a big role because data on employee strengths aspirations individual drives etc is captured during this exercise which is very important exercise for companies to capture this kind of data and uh, how do we you know analyze this data going forward during the year and and bring in our employee uh, propositions you know which are uh, individual coaching systems etc uh, bases this data so uh, tech adoption is slow uh, and and still to be widespread in in performance management as of now but yeah there are companies looking at you know uh, moving to this kind of space and uh, traditional methods uh, methods are still part of you know uh, many companies so uh, let me ask uh, uh the panelists now uh, there's a power panel here with uh, me so the first question probably is to uh let me ask yuvraj first yuvraj is sitting next to me so yuvraj uh, is the performance management annual cycle relevant anymore to the current current context or 
do you think annual cycle ratings etc is more creates more of a breakdown of communication between the manager and the employee thank you sukhjit hello hello audible you sounded as if you know um, let me ask who is the person i lost the first question and perhaps you had told me ki yuvraj will be the first one so i had only picked up the mic <laughs> so uh, i think if you look at performance management system and i will not talk about only the annual review process sukhjit what is happening is performance management system the way organizations approach uh, i have a very different theory around it right and suddenly this reality has dawned on to me that i think performance for the individuals are supposed to be managed by the individuals because and the moment you put anything in the in in the park of a human resource or somebody else who is a third party to manage then what happens as an adult you start behaving like a child and that's what happens when you go to the schools people kids are told to really sit down or get up or come out of the class or start doing the homework they are child what happens performance management system in our ecosystem treats adults like children and the day uh, adults will start getting treated like adults whether it is in terms of a goal setting or in terms of evaluation or in terms of a reward i think i don't think there will be a need of having a performance management system function as a imagine a situation you know um, i am supposed to be getting rewarded by doing what i am supposed to be doing i come to the organization to work i am working with the sole intent of earning my bread and butter based on the delivery what i do and somebody else is chasing me to do what i am supposed to be doing every hr professional sitting in the room will say that you know every quarter you have to really run after people to fill up their self evaluation after that you'll have to really figure out that uh, half yearly evaluation has to happen or year end evaluation has to happen so how do we take this whole process of performance management to the people who are impacted will redefine it right now what we are doing is we are doing very very transactional transformational change from bell curve to non bell curve from yearly to quarterly sort of a thing the day people will start setting their own goals and they'll start reporting back on what they have done on their goals and they'll start being evaluated on that the day will come when people will start owning their performance and that's what is important the revolution has to go in that direction you you say what you are supposed to be doing i'll only wait and if you don't come to me every quarter that what have you done then i don't think that you have done anything so how do i really take it to the to the to the employee workforce will redefine and in the current context i think that annual quarterly we have a hybrid system in our organization 3000 people there are different type of people there is various cuts and jobs some people are quarterly evaluated some people are paid quarterly some people are evaluated six monthly some people are uh, evaluated on a on a yearly basis so we have defined this process there are certain challenges in it which perhaps i'll talk to you when 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 we come back in the next talk we'll discuss the examples later uh, from your organization let me ask anjali anjali uh, do you also feel that the annual cycle is actually leading to more of demotivation of employees and pose some attrition risks in the in your organization so i think that's a great question but the uh, answer lies in uh, your question itself you know when you say annual or when you say a demotivation or you say attrition those are really outcomes uh, if we go back to uh, the root back to the back to basics uh, the reason for creating an annual appraisal was because it was supposed to help people stay ahead of the curve help them to succeed uh you know identify opportunities uh, to improve so continuous feedback be agile in this changing environment and so on but what is it uh, if you if you limit it to an annual process what it lands up doing is you're looking over your shoulder you're identifying gaps versus uh, enabling somebody to succeed uh, you're giving feedback uh, you know at a particular time when it is way past uh uh the situation and so therefore it's not enabling anybody to perform or stay ahead of the curve because you're telling them what they could have done uh rather than enabling them to do it along the way so i think uh uh it's uh, it's a conditioning that uh, has played over the years and years for hr professionals to think that this has to be at a particular time even when we say quarterly uh uh you know monthly uh half yearly we are still uh, acting in a structure with a, and and therefore becoming more the process centric rather than human centric uh in our approach but the tool is important but uh, but from a different dimension so when you say annual um uh, uh and uh the impact 
uh, I think those are really outcomes. Um, and and uh, we really need to get back to the basics and liberate ourselves from this binary yeah. uh, of uh, uh, in, in life. Yeah. So let's take a non-HR view. Yeah, uh, probably, yeah, Rajendra, you can add to this because the fact is that still, I don't know about your organization, but the fact is that still about 80% plus organizations rely on annual cycle, yeah. okay? So the, the world is talking about changing to continuous performance, etc., but that's the fact. So what, what happens? Annual cycle only, yeah. Yeah. So uh, two reasons why these um, annual cycles are dreaded, like you mentioned, for particularly by the post-millennials. Uh, one is, there is another cycle that runs parallel, which is the monetary upgrade or the hike or the um, increments that I get. So if that is the only time you're going to also have a conversation about performance, I'm actually not listening to your feedback. I'm looking at how many thousands of rupees are added to my pay scale, right? That's one important problem. We need to find a way to split these two conversations and uh, that is something I am trying with my team. The uh, second problem with uh, such um, uh, long duration cycles is there is this uh, little finger in front of me that is very close to my eye that is obstructing almost three-fourths of this room simply because it's very close to me. Right? So this uh, metaphor, when the cycle uh, starts coming a couple of weeks from now, you will see people staying longer, um, writing more emails, uh, doing more so-called productive work because that is the only thing that will stick. Yeah. If you have been performing very well throughout the year and something got screwed up just a couple of weeks before, that is the thing that stands like a huge rock, an obstacle in front of you and that is the thing that probably shades and guides your appraisal. The reverse is also true. If you have been a mediocre performer throughout the year and you are able to somehow pull it off the last home run couple of weeks, that ends up deciding how your appraisal goes, ends up. So these are the two important reasons I think this annual cycle thing should um, uh, be made, done away with. But like you said, 80% still believe in it. So what we are trying in our team is, it is an annual appraisal, but it is not a group appraisal. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, every person joins the organization at a different date. So we have it close to their work anniversary. So it is annual for them, but only for that per person. So it is a celebration of the uh, time that person has spent with us. And it is also like a reboot and a boost up about his performance. Everybody else gets to appreciate that day. It's not comparison, it's not jealousy, it's not uh, how much did you get, how much did I get. That's the thing. So we were definitely, you know, talking about involving all the employees. Yuvraj mentioned about, you know, they should be self-starters in, in terms of uh, starting their own goal setting and reaching out to the manager to seek feedback, etc. But the fact is that, you know, uh, as, as we say, there, there are a lot of organizations struggling with introducing this continuous uh, performance systems. So let me ask uh, Rahul. Rahul, you have you had a company which is about I think 6,000 plus people in in India and South Asia. So uh, have you have you introduced such systems in your organization and what has been the results and what have been the uh, you know uh, challenges in implementing this kind of continuous performance systems? So, so great question, uh, Sukhjit, and and I think I'll I'll just uh, give a perspective. So. So I work in a company which has 60,000 people across the globe and uh, the logo of ADP is always designing for people. Uh, since we deal with 50 million people every month, uh, you know, we have great amount of data and knowledge about uh, people per se. And I think the, the objective of performance management is to enhance productivity and enhance performance. And, and that's what we are talking about. So a couple of years back, we instituted a worldwide research through our uh, research institute and, and came up with this idea that if we have to enhance performance, we have to give continuous feedback to employees. Uh, and that continuous feedback has to happen through weekly check-ins. And it requires a complete behavioral change across the organization. Uh, you know, the team leaders uh, who are the leads uh, who manage individuals, uh, they should be sen sensitized about this aspect that, you know, hey, giving feedback and working on the strengths of their team is the most important aspect. And they have to therefore understand what their 
teammates, employees are doing week on week and how they can help them improve performance week on week. It cannot be a yearly process, it cannot be anything more than a week in my understanding because things change so rapidly. So of course, uh, uh, you know, the behavioral aspects, the cultural change and, and, and the philosophical change that, you know, it has to be a continuous process is a big challenge. And of course, to do that, uh, we need a tool, right? We use a tool which is called Standout. It's used by multiple organizations. It's owned by us. But then, but then I think it requires a tool. But, but to me, it looks like tool is just an enabler. You know, the thought process of uh, checking in every week is is the critical most point here. So, sticking to the theme of uh, making it continuous performance systems, you know. Can you share some examples from your organizations where you have leveraged technology in making it a continuous process as compared to just sticking to the annual cycle? Any of you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, one thing that I've been trying in my team and it's slowly uh, migrating to other teams in my company, we have around 8,000 people, uh, 100 plus teams, uh, is uh, we are trying to break this uh, competitive mode of we have been growing in that mode in school, in colleges, it's all about how well are you doing in comparison with the other so that I can rank you. Like you talked about the bell curve. We can do away with the bell curve but the data still remains that it is like a bell. There are a lot of uh, people in the average mode, there are some underperformers and there are some 10x superstars. So what we have tried to flip around is we have tried to encourage sharing, collaborating and doing things together and bringing a layer of thankfulness to it. So we have a simple mobile app within our team. Uh, we are a mobile app building team, so it was easy for us to build it. So anytime anybody wants to say thanks to the other person for going the extra mile, for staying back a little longer, for helping them solve a naughty problem, or just giving emotional support sitting next to them, um, this person can give a, I thank you for this aspect. And uh, end of the month, we uh, look at the leaderboard. The leaderboard is not visible throughout the month. Just the end of the month, uh, the administrator can look at it. And we have an employee, uh, most thanked employee of the month, which is very different from best performing employee of the month. Mm. So we have a most thanked employee of the month thing. And that's like um, a really liberating uh, and positive feeling. People don't, uh, uh, they don't appreciate somebody for doing something very well. They appreciate somebody for, th uh, for work they received, help they received. And that is something that motivates sharing and collaborating, which is something we, every company needs if it has to uh, fight against other competing companies in the marketplace, than just have intra-team uh, competition. Yeah. yeah. Anjali, you, you were also sharing some examples of uh, technology-enabled performance systems in your organization, so can you just share that with us? Yeah, others? sure. Yeah. Uh, and actually, we, uh, the technology is, like uh, we said a little earlier, uh, just the enabler or the tool. Uh, but I think the core of uh, what we do is really trying to use performance uh, management to empower uh, employees and to enable them to perform to their best potential, whatever that may be, uh, really uh, unique and tailored to each person. So it starts uh, all the way from uh, a simple thing like, say, Say goal setting, suppose one of you were to be joining us uh, already at the interview process. Uh, everybody, and I'm, I'm trying to make this a little practical in case it works for you, feel free to steal with pride. Um, so uh, we, we make them fill up a very simple uh, uh, road map uh, for themselves. And what it does is it entangles them into the entire business. So you go out, you research uh, uh, the organization, look at our competitor base, you come back, by the time you come in, either for the interview or on your day of joining, you already have built a 30, 60, 90 day. But guess what? That's really channelizing thinking of people. It is really goal setting at the end of the day from a business perspective. But what it does is helps people hit the road running uh, on the day they arrive. It's a very simple but a very powerful thing that we get fantastic feedback from people who join in. They say that that really entangles them. The other example I could give you uh, on technology is, um, is, is shifting gears a little bit, maybe looking at what we talked earlier about having annual uh, reviews. Uh, but what that does is it makes it a review versus a reflection. And the key word here is, is reflection. Uh, what we do is every quarter, 
um, we sit down with our teams one on one and we reflect and and that's why i emphasize that we reflect on the year on on the quarter gone by the goal of that discussion is not to put a label on good and bad and right and wrong but to say how did things go i think things have changed maybe you should try this it's very supportive the topic for today is performance but a very natural byproduct of this entire process is that it builds coaching leadership style uh, amongst all our leaders and what happens is there are no surprises and what what's the other outcome everybody succeeding because the goal is to succeed not to just uh, identify gaps and we use the tool uh, for this for people to go and feed in at the end of the day you want to feed your achievements in go the tool is just to manage data but it is not agnostic of uh, um, you know the the leader uh, interaction in the whole process so tool is used yes subjit yeah. but it's just to enable management of information and all of that but the goal is to help people succeed through whether it's a 30 60 90 day plan whether it's through the reflections feeding in stuff into the tool on your achievements it doesn't matter all of those formats You raj any examples that you want to share on tech enabled performance systems in your yeah, before that i think uh, i'll i'll uh, respond to rajender i think that uh, he talked about you know uh, you know biases at the time of hmm. appraisal year and within a week two weeks i think that that stereotypes or the preconceived ideas basically impacts i think that uh, as a hr fraternity i think that we have been able to really control that to a to a great great extent wherein i think that managers have become slightly more conscious hr team members have become far more sensitive about the fact that recency should not really affect the overall outcome of the reward system but as you are saying rightly that you know there are there are certain things which still needs to be looked at in terms of individual level, level biases so uh, and and now coming to your question you know i think we need to find a midway on one extreme you talk about automating everything right and you say there has to be a you know a uh, human element in whatever you do on the other extreme you say uh, let's do an annual review so both are two different extremes what is the middle path we try to do a middle path with all sincerity and honesty performance management systems are always disputed because people who get affected by that are the ones who say it is not transparent it is biased i have not been fairly evaluated and that is why all all halla gulla about performance management system right the day people will be very happy i don't think there will be a discussion around performance management system so what we do is we realize that there are two two informations which are important one source of data based on which you are evaluating people if that source of data is disputable performance or the measurement will always be disputable if somebody has achieved a certain targets and you say okay fine as per my tracker you have achieved only 90% and the fellow says my tracker says that i have already achieved 105% so how do you really sensitize the data and create in the organization single source of information for all matrix and ensure that it passes through all the processes and sits into everybody's evaluation process on a quarterly basis or yearly basis or a six monthly basis so that data part dispute is over so everybody knows that i have underachieved i have overachieved that is one part second part is people are not looking at preaching sessions by the managers which are very very calendarized people are also not looking for a coffee break discussions where you generally say yaar tune acha nahi kiya hua hai how do you really do it what we have done we have said that in a year there is a tool available this tool remains open all through the year every manager should pick up the right time at least three times in a year you should give a comprehensive feedback to that individual on a tool so what happens january you are setting the goals for the quarter at the same time somebody runs after you and says ki yaar pichle quarter ka evaluation bhar do so the business guys will say boss i will continue to do this only for two two weeks right so you say okay fine don't don't club it do your evaluation and goal setting in the month of january but please take out time in the month of february or a june or a july whenever you feel it's a lull period for you pick up three instances during the year and give a feedback to a person on the system we also encourage a culture wherein we tell employees that you have to also seek feedback and don't only hold yourself from uh, for taking feedback from your manager pick up people within the system and through that tool only ask okay yuvraj you have worked with me on so and so project can you share some feedback on this thing so what happens end of the year when you sum you summarize all the feedback for an individual there are six or seven 
points of information available for an individual. Timeline is of no consequence, right? Whether it has happened end of the quarter, end of the year. If you have that data point, evaluation will not be disputed. If it is not disputed, then I think there is better acceptability. So we do two things. One is a single source of information, postered, everybody knows. This is what the achievement is, let's not dispute it. Second is keep the feedback process on. And when you say continuous feedback, a lot of time it is taken, okay, jab kare tab feedback de do. Yeah. I think that is also not right. I think that you have to really decide some frequency or some numbers. So you okay, fine, three to four years in a year. If you give it two or three feedback you have taken, end of the year when we are sitting, let's have all those data points available. Based on that, we can design our discussion. So that's what okay. we do, and yeah. I think it has been working well. Okay, before we go thing, the, one yeah. more thing what I wanted to add is that I want, to, I want to quickly have a check whether the audience is still awake or not. Right? If that's you allow me. Laughing. Yeah, because before we go to the next question. So, whosoever wants to go first. No, actually, uh, that's go a beautiful it. point he mentioned yeah. about not just soliciting feedback from the manager. Many times it so happens that the manager knows least about who you are and what you do. There are other people across the length and breadth of the organization. In fact, we have even added a, an anonymous cross-grid feedback, we call it. It will just drop into his mailbox and uh, the manager's mailbox. And it's up to them to decide whether to take it as a, a gripe or whether there is some genuine uh, germ of uh, information in it. But the person doesn't want to sell it in the face because it's going to be a colleague all year round. So that's an amazing um, okay. point. Thanks. So this is, an, a question, this is a question to audience. So describe in one, so while some of you must have implemented technology and performance management in your organizations, but describe one word, in one word, only one word, as to what should not go away from the performance management system. Okay, so what you, what you should not lose while implementing tech. Sorry? Fairness. Madness. Fairness. Fairness. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought madness. <laughs> okay, so I, I think yeah, audience is awake. Okay, so uh, any other, any other, any anybody else who wants to go for one word, only one word, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's he's just explaining the word connect for all of us. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we got the definition of connect. Anybody else wants to go for it? Clarity. Arriving at the root cause. Okay, it can't be one word. Yeah, okay. Uh, clarity. Yeah. Feed forward. Okay. Clarity. Yeah. Strengths. So dwell on strengths. Yeah. Clarity. Clarity on clarity. Goals. Performance. I Objectives. Okay. Dialoguing. Dialoguing. So how do you do dialoguing on tech? Okay. So this is my next question to all of you. While we are implementing tech, you know, big time and a lot of you have already experimented in your organizations and you, you just mentioned that, you know, we have to follow a mid path, you know. So how do we have face-to-face uh, -face discussions, dialoguing also al along with tech or, or some people say that, you know, while you can do a KRA or a KPI kind of evaluation on the tech, but softer aspects you can't put on tech. So how do we go about it? So any, any sure. examples around that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, this is a live example that we do every day in our organization, okay. right? So, so dialoguing is very important and dialoguing cannot happen after a month. Hey, you know what? Uh, well, you have not done this and th this and, you know, I mean, I think the feedback, we have to come out of this word called feedback, right? And we have to replace it with uh, what is called as coaching, strength-based coaching. So if, if there is a direct report of mine and, uh, you know, I have to give feedback, I have to look at the strengths and continuously reinforce that strengths. And that happens only when I know what that person has done during the course of the week, what are the priorities, and I give my comments on, you know, hey, this is what you should do as well, this is your strength has been, good work done, etc. right? So this is called dialoguing, and whilst there could be a tool, an app that could facilitate this, but I think nothing replaces uh, one-on-one -on -one interaction. And, and I think uh, I've seen this has uh, brought significant change in the organization that I lead. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's a little disruptive to start and think, but I guess uh, this is gonna be the way forward, especially whilst working with multi-gen workforce.
Uh, I like the word dialoguing that you've uh, picked up, uh, Sukhjit. It, uh, it strikes uh, another chord with me, which is that the performance management system, in my view, is also a very democratizing process. Uh, we we uh, sometimes think of it only as a manager uh, to an employee feedback, and, and some people use the word feed forward. Uh, but that's, again, on the feedback side. Uh, I remember a couple of uh, years, not, not very long ago, one or two years ago, working on an agile team. And even though I was leading the team uh, to use uh, a tool to drive performance, we picked a collaboration tool. And I love the fact that not only could I push goals onto the team, but the team could push goals back onto me, uh, which I think was a very, very uh, uh, fair process. Somebody used that word as well. Uh, not only was it fair, but it was so democratic, because who said goals have to be set only in one direction? Feedback has to be given only in one direction. Uh, actually, it's a two-way process, and that's why I love it. It's just that uh, we've got conditioned, like I said, over time to, to fit it to a particular process. I think there was a session on rewards before this. We use rewards as a process, but we just spread it any time when we need it. But performance management, we can't seem to be able to be able to spread it across uh, like we should be doing it, like any other process. So I think it's democratizing just as much as uh, uh, discussing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I you think there is uh, one dilemma here that we need to acknowledge. Um, almost everything today is trackable. We can um, hoard data about almost everything. At the same time, almost everything that we have data on is probably not worth tracking. Right? Almost everything is trackable. Almost everything that we track is not worth tracking. Because there is a second layer that we need to abstract ourselves into. Because it's so easy to get distracted on uh, KPAs and uh, the way to uh, how much work is done, what time, how, how, how fast the delivery was, quality control and so on. The other problem that we have started facing is that because of technology, uh, even people who do very good work, simply because of their age or technology or tech tools abhorrence, are not recognized as much as the digital natives. People who are uh, so comfortable with uh, uh, the mobile phones or uh, with online forums of interaction. We need to address that because there is that digital divide also plays a role in the organization inside. People do great work but are not okay. recognized. You want to add that. quickly something before we go to, because we just three minutes left so on the screen. So I, I I'll, think I'll from my it. point of yeah. view, uh, very uh, briefly, set the goals with people but communicate it on the technology. Yeah. Have feedback, uh, give feedback and conversations on, on, the, on the tool but have communication of the same in person. So how do you really define what is more database pushed to people through technology, but when it comes to disseminating and talking to people, you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. That's yeah. what I'll And I would say make it more human-centric rather than process-centric. Okay, so we have two minutes, 15 seconds left. We have scope for two questions. So, and you have to name the panelists you're asking and the question. And be short, please, yeah. So, uh, I am Shan Mohammed from Reliance Industry. So uh, my question is for uh, Abhinandan uh, and uh, uh, other panelists also. We are talking about individual performance, but there are concepts coming in the market, specifically in IT sector, this team-based performance. So how we tackle the team-based performance piece? And uh, most of the things in the team-based performance is based on OKR as well as the continuous feedback, weekly check-ins. And the second piece of this, this particular question is we are we want to dis, uh, you can say bifurcate performance and rewards, but how that can be easily possible in the current scenario because most of the things is related to performance and then leads to reward piece. Okay, so team. Yeah, yeah. Based so I I strongly well. think the team based performance approach makes much more sense yeah. because you are an org as an organization will either sink or float as a group, yeah. right? And uh, the, even in the Indian cricket team, you will notice whatever a superstar you are, if you are other members in the team are not performing equally well, are not able to gel well and work on your weaknesses with their strengths and vice versa, um, there is no real purpose to the, the end game isn't achieved. So I think the move forward should be on team-based performance and how well they work as a group. 
that is something that's not uh, evaluated how? at all these days chemistry right yeah. how well they play so how do we do it along with individual performance? That's the question probably. So yeah. actually it should be um, uh, something that we give more importance to than individual performances. Mm. That's what I would say. Okay. Same tools will translate. I think there was another part to his question as well, which was on how do you differentiate between performance and rewards? Um, and we, we think that we need the performance management system in order to pay compensation. But actually compensation is driven largely by budgets. Uh, even if you're leading a team, if I ask you today, we are at the start of the year, who are your top three people in your team? You can tell me right now, uh, and you don't necessarily need to go through that entire uh, process, but you pay based on budgets, but we just tend to link it. Yeah. Okay, one last question. Yeah. When we talk of goals, um, the reporting managers talk of the means by which the goals have been achieved and not, not necessarily the goals themselves. So uh, it doesn't matter what goals are there on the sheet. Ultimately, the managers are like, yeah, they may, the employee may have achieved the goals, but the means are not correct. So therefore, if we also bring the means and the ends on the goal sheet, the goal sheet will become a laundry list. So how do you, how do you work with the managers and the employees in working out this, this dichotomy between the end, which is the goal, and the means by which the goals are being achieved? So, uh, uh, what I understand when you are saying means basically are the tactics to really achieve the goal, right? I think answer to your question is that there are different levels in the organization and the levels are defined, are you delivering tactics or you are delivering strategy? So there are some people who are responsible for the lag indicators. That final sale has happened, it's fine, but have you gained market share? So that's a leader's objective. He will be evaluated on that but at the same time a guy who's in the field who's doing his everyday route and selling the product he should be evaluated based on what he's supposed to be delivering as a tactic so i'm saying that for the levels in the organizations you'll have to define that who should be evaluated on what yeah thanks okay, so, so just, there's uh, one more uh, one question thought. that we can ask uh, I ju i've just been told that out of the three questions so two have been asked one more can we can uh, you can ask and there's a prize by adobe uh, okay so what the best question and the best question gets decided by the by the panel. <laughs> by the panel. Okay. Uh, okay. So one more question. My name is Abhishek, and uh, my question to uh, primarily, I mean, all of the panels can answer uh, answer this. How do you keep still keep the object? I mean, fairness. The point that was raised by another gentleman here, that uh, while managers evaluate and while the conversations happen, there is uh, the fairness issue comes up. That it depends again on the manager and and as an organization, we. We can't really control that always. So how do you still keep the fairness aspect intact that uh, within a team, when an individual performance is happening, uh, being evaluated, it's still to a certain degree of fairness. So let me take that question. Yeah. So, so fairness is uh, the biggest, uh, uh, I would say, stigma in performance uh, management. It's a, it's, it's a big thing. And research after research has showed that this is where the performance management uh, systems fail. Uh, I think uh, the best way to counter this and to mitigate this is to do a regular check-in, regular performance uh, discussion, week on week is again I would emphasize on, because that way uh, you're looking at very closely, you are not translating human beings into numbers at the end of it, right? Three on four, three, three on five, four on five, etc., and then put some merit increase against it, which is I think dehumanizing to a very large extent. So to to, to play a fair game, I think we would have to give uh, feedback, coaching, dialoguing at a very, very frequent level. I think that's the only way to, to address this fairness issue. You know, uh, I think uh, we also need to be sensitive to the fact fairness is everybody's lens of fairness is very different. So as an organization, we need to be aligned to this, right? I can say I'm an affected party, the team uh, pop, uh, manager has not been fair. But at the same time, there will be larger population which will say that things have been reasonably fair. So let's accept the reasonability and the percentage or the what the quantum of fairness we are looking at. Yeah. From the organizational point of view, if you uh, people who have been part of you know IR setups, they'll realize that there was a, a principle which is said that justice not only has to be done, it has to be also seen to have been done. So if you look at the managers, they need to be really drilled down with this thought that you know not only be fair you have to be also seen to be fair. The moment this principle starts getting followed by the managers, they will err on the positive side and start being far more fair than what they are perceived rather than being seen, right? 
That's what. Okay. Any last view on the fairness? Yeah. yeah. Um, not on the fairness, but I want a, a message to be shared with yeah, the HR please. community. Yeah. So cut them some slack, all the employees. I mean, it should not be managed end to end. It's, uh, if you are managing, if you want a creative organization, you need to give them that slack. By slack, I mean give them extra time that is not metered, probably. Or give them a promotion, give them a leap to the next level of management where you promise them that there is a safety net under them. Even if you fail, it is okay. Yeah. Go, go ahead and experiment. Google does that 20% time. All of these point to that single word, slack. Yeah. In the aim to measure and manage everything, uh, this dehumanizing that our friend was referring to, if you don't give them that slack, um, uh, the true creative potential of an organization will not be achieved. That's okay. something we have Thank you. The time is up. And uh, <laughs> let's start the fair game right away. Uh, let the panel decide amongst the three questions fairly as to who's the winner. One was uh, team performance. Uh, uh, appraisal versus individual. Second was the how to be fair as in appraisal. Second, the third question was by uh, what? means and ends. Yeah. So which one is the best question out of the three? Which one? Team. Okay. So the gentleman who asked the question about team performance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, do, I, do you want to give it right now or later? You want to announce your name, please, again. Shah Mohammed. Okay. Okay. So you can collect your award from Jonas. Uh, thank you, panelists. Uh, very engaging discussion by all of you and very engaging audience. Uh, I just want to end by a couple of points here. Whether we enable tech or not, I think a couple of things always remain core to the performance system. One, performance systems should help build deeper connection and level of engagement with people and the team members. Second, there has to be frequent mutual exchange of thought, feedbacks, and ideas. And third, we should take this opportunity as HR professionals to collect data on employee strengths, development areas, interests, uh, career uh, issues, creativity, well-being, feedback, lifestyle, etc., and probably you know work on these uh, data points to make it better engage employee in future. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, audience, and thanks the th thank you again to the panelists. Over to you, Jonas.